patchwork party cardi crochet along. I'm Jess from Make A New Crew and I've partnered with my friends at Lion Brand to create this four part free pattern and video tutorial series. In the first two weeks we completed the sweater body and today we'll be tackling the sleeves. Remember that if you need any support while you work or you want to share your progress, we'd love for you to join us in the Facebook group. You can find the link to part three of the free written pattern as well as the link to the ad free printable PDF below this video. All right, let's make some sleeves. To get started here, it's important to understand how our sleeves are gonna come together. So on each sleeve, we will be making two full length strips and they are just like our body strips with a little bit of a decrease in the first couple of rows, but the concept is essentially the same. Then we'll also on either sleeve be using a triangular piece to create the angle um, of decrease to taper the sleeve from the shoulder down to the wrist. So first we're gonna talk about the longer full length rectangle strips. And one thing I should call out here, I filmed this tutorial in a different order than we laid out the crochet along sections. So you're going to see some ribbing as I work here. And that is not because you've missed something in the pattern. It's just that the ribbing is coming next in the fourth video tutorial. So that'll give you a little peek of what to look forward to. The full length strips on your sleeve are going to begin just like they did in the main body of the sweater. So if you need a refresher, go back to video one to remember how we started those. But one thing I like to do in the sleeve strips is start with a long tail in my foundation, foundation chain. So I've just left this here and tied it up because I may use it later on for seaming my sleeve into place. So it's just nice to have it so I don't have to attach another piece of yarn. Now the decreases in our sleeve strips vary just a little bit by size. So I'm going to show you how to do the decreases, but then you're gonna to wanna to look at the written pattern to know exactly which rows you're going to decrease on for your size. And everything else about what we're doing in the strip remains the same from what we've done previously. So you'll do the appropriate number of rows it's most likely fewer rows than what you did in the main body strips. So just check out the written pattern. It'll spell it out really clearly there how many rows you need per color. So for our full length strips, we're doing a couple of decreases toward the beginning of the strip and then we're just cruising along in regular rows, working even, changing colors when appropriate till we get down to the wrist. All right, right here I've already done my foundation chain and worked row one of extended half double crochets. So I wanna show you how we do our decreases. And we're going to start with three tighter chains just like we normally would. And then from here, we're going to count that as our first stitch. And now we need to do one more stitch of extended half double crochet just like normal. So my decrease is going to bring two stitches together and make them into one stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop, just like I would normally in extended half double crochet, yarn over and pull my loop through, just like normal, that's that little chain there. But instead of finishing my stitch here, I'm gonna leave these loops on my hook and then start a new stitch in the next available stitch. So I pull up my loop, I do that chain, now I've got five loops on my hook because I've completed half of a stitch here, half of a stitch here. So I'm going to yarn over and pull my yarn through all five of those loops. And that's what's going to merge two stitches into one. So now we've just decreased by one. We're going to work normal extended half double crochet stitches in our row here until we have four stitches remaining at the end of the row. And now, as you can see here, I've got my turning chain stitch. So that's one, two, three, four. So like I said, we're always going to do this decrease two in from the edge. So I'm gonna leave those alone for a minute. I'm going to do another one of these decreases over the next two stitches. So that's a yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through. That's my chain. I've got three loops now. I'm gonna move on to the other stitch with a yarn over, insert my hook, pull up a loop. Now I'm going to do that chain by yarning over and pulling through. Now I have five loops on my hook, so I'm going to yarn over and pull through all five of those loops at one time. And now I've merged two stitches into one again, and I can work my last two stitches just as I normally would. So if you were to count your stitches right now, you should have two fewer stitches than you did in the previous row. And this, this uh, way of decreasing is exactly what we're going to do in the triangular piece of the sleeve as well. Um, but 
for now, you may have another row of decreases for your size, um, or you might just cruise on and create what is essentially like a normal strip that you created for the body. Again, you will probably have fewer rows um, of each color, but everything else about it should be basically the same concepts. So go ahead and make two strips like that. Again, keeping in mind how all of your colors are playing together. And then we'll come back here and talk about how to make our triangular strip. Now let's talk about how we make the triangular strip for our sleeves. And this is where almost all of the decreases will take place in this little Eiffel Tower strip here. So this is going to be underneath your arm. This little slit is going to fit in the armhole of your sweater. And then this will go down toward your wrist over here. And what we've got here is two pieces that began separately and are connected in this row. And then some decreases that happen as we continue in the pattern of the same number of rows. We worked for our sleeve strips with fewer decreases in. So in that case here, this is nine rows and we're changing colors every nine rows as we complete the series of decreases that are called for in your size of the pattern. So I will show you how to create this and then you can follow along with the pattern to know exactly how to create your size sleeve. To begin our first little rectangle to create our slit, I've started here with a foundation chain and I'm going to work this just as if I was making like a little mini strip. I'm going to work even, which means working without increasing or decreasing for several rows. Again, the pattern will tell you exactly how many foundation chains to start with and then how many rows you're going to make. But that's what I'm doing here. I'm just making, it's gonna be very tiny and I need that little strip uh, I'm actually going to make two of them and then connect them and then we'll get going on our decreases for the triangle. And your completed mini strip should look something like this. Again, the stitch counts and row counts will vary a bit depending on size, but you'll essentially have this small little rectangle. And on the very first one, we're going to fasten off and you can just leave a tail there. And then you're gonna repeat the process once more to create an identical mini rectangle. And that time you wanna keep your yarn attached because we're going to use it for the rest of our triangle. Once I've got two rectangles here, I am going to keep my yarn attached here and then I want the wrong side facing of both rectangles. So in this case, I want the tail, my foundation tail facing my dominant hand, okay? So I'm right-handed, it's facing this way and this is easy to tell because we want to be able to work across the top of these two pieces and join them into one. So I need my hook on the side where my crochet hand is. So from here, we're going to work a regular row. It's just going to span the top of both pieces. So that just means extended half double crocheting in each of my stitches of my first strip. And I'm working, making sure to work in that turning chain, the last stitch there. So I've worked across the top of the first strip and now I wanna join it to the second strip. So I am going to yarn over just like I would if I were beginning a new stitch and I'm just inserting my hook in the next stitch over here. So this requires a bit of holding on because everything can get a little loosey goosey if you don't, but I wanna pull my yarn through and then I might need to tighten it down a little bit just to get the height correct. Yarn over, whoopsie. There we go, yarn over like I would with a normal stitch and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. So now I've worked my first stitch on the second strip and I can continue in regular extended half double crochet all the way to the end of this second strip. All right, so it should look something like this now. You may need to tighten this down uh, because it can get a little loose where you fastened off and you're not using that yarn anymore, but you just tighten it down and you should have, if there were say seven stitches in each of these strips, you would expect that there would be 14 stitches up here, but actually the correct stitch count should be one fewer than these added together. And that's just because we didn't create a chain three at the beginning of this second strip because we were joining it and we were already carrying along our way. So that's not very important to totally understand the mechanics of. You can just look at the pattern to know what stitch count you should have, but that's why we're decreasing by one um, kind of without trying. So now we're going to work uh, 
A combination of even rows, which means no decreases at all, combined with decrease rows, just like we did in that sleeve strip before, and we're going to continue to taper our triangle while simultaneously switching colors when appropriate. So however many rows you worked per color in your other sleeve strips, it's gonna be the same for your triangular strip. So you're gonna switch, say, maybe after nine, 10 rows, use all the same skills, but we're just going to be decreasing the number of stitches we have in our rows until we finally finish off and we're just at a point up here at the top. So if you need any help remembering how to decrease, you can rewind this video by a couple of minutes and go over what that looks like to do your couple of stitches and then a decrease and then work across the row, wait till there's four stitches remaining, work a decrease, and then finish off the row with the last two stitches. It's the same concept here. You'll again wanna reference the written pattern to know exactly which rows you should decrease on because it changes a bit depending on the size. So with all of that in mind, to take all those skills you've already practiced and developed and crochet yourself two triangle strips. Now that the sleeve strips are done, you should have something that looks sort of like this. It'll vary a bit depending on your size, but you should essentially have a wider edge over here with the slit in the middle, um, tapering down to where it's going to join at your wrist. And if you've ever knit or crocheted a sweater before and made a sleeve, you've probably made something like this shape. And in this case, we've just broken it down to its main elements so that we can work that patchwork pattern. So now our job is to join these two together so we have one main kind of trapezoid that we can insert in the armhole of our sweater. I'm just going to rotate this like this so that you can get a better sense of my orientation here. So I want to make sure that I've got my strips aligned so that they will fit in the sweater uh, in the direction I want. So this is one of those cases again where it's worth pinning this together holding it up to your sweater, making sure that it's all correct in terms of which colors you want to line up with other colors, and just double check twice before you go to the effort of seaming anything together. But when you're sure that you have the orientation correct, you want to lay down your strips so that the right side is again facing down. So this is the wrong side facing up, and I can tell that because I see the back of row one here, the wrong side, and also the tail for my chain is on the same side as my dominant hand. So that's the case here. That's also the case for each of these two little baby uh, striplets there. <laughs> and then um, also on this side. So I've got the wrong side facing up for each, and we are now going to want to just pin these together where the colors intersect, and then we're going to use that same seaming technique um, that we used previously. So if you don't remember that, you can just go back and watch the last video that demonstrated that. But we're going to seam right here, and then you're going to go down here to connect right there, and down there to connect there so we create one larger piece of fabric. And where possible, you want to use these tails that you left for yourself so that you can weave in an end and join your sweater pieces all at the same time. All right, this is an exciting part. We are going to join our sleeves into the armhole now. And as you can see in this side here, I've already joined this in. So I have my armhole, the bottom, this was my shorter strip that went in the armpit. That is connected to the V that was formed in my triangular sleeve strip. <laughs> it's a little harder to see now, but I'm hoping by showing you like this, you can see this is the triangle and the V should attach quite well right here at the very top of that armpit strip. So this is all going to go under your arm here. And then we've just got some typical seaming here, attaching the rest of the sleeve into the armhole and then a finish by just seaming the top two strips together all the way down to the wrist. So now let's jump over here to the other side that has not yet been sewn and I wanna show you a couple things to keep in mind as you're joining this. So we're going to use the same seaming technique that we've used for all of our strips. So that means you're just picking up a little bit of fabric on each side, 
working back and forth, back and forth. And wherever you can, you wanna use the yarn tails that you've left yourself. As you pin it, again, you want to keep the lines of any color delineation really aligned. So you can see here, I've got that pinned here. Then I've got this pinned up at the top because I want this to create a nice, tidy intersection. And then again, as I go down the sleeve, I want to make sure that these colors, these patches line up with each other. So you can pin that as you go, pin it all at once. I kind of like to pin it all at once so it's all in place before I start seaming. And it really doesn't matter where along the armhole you start seaming. You can kind of see where you have a tail that you want to use and then just go from there. One important thing to note, I should have said first, is that my wrong side is facing in both cases here. So this is the wrong side of the sweater, this is the wrong side of the sleeve, and I can tell that by looking at my seaming on previous seams. So when I'm sure I've got the wrong side on both, I'm ready to seam and I can go kind of in any direction. You're going to want to seam the underarm and the V and then all the way around this kind of shoulder area. And then you will go, after that is complete, you'll go from the shoulder here down to the cuff. And when that is complete on one side, you'll go ahead and move over and do the exact same thing for the other sleeve. All right, once your sleeves are finished, you are so close to the end of this project. I'm really proud of you for making it this far. I would love to see all your hard work. Share your work in progress pictures on Instagram using the hashtag so we can all admire them. And remember, there's a lot of support for you in our Facebook group. Can you believe next week is our last week? We're going to learn how to complete the ribbing and add the finishing touches that'll really make your cardigan unique. Until then, happy crocheting.